In this video, me and my buddy Jason, the creator of Cultic, discuss his biggest mistakes when making a game completely alone and how you can avoid them. And if you stick around through this entire video, you're gonna walk away with top tier advice from one of the most brilliant full-time game developers I've ever met who sold over 50,000 copies of his first by the way, the sale for my new course, YouTube Game Dev, starts today. You're gonna learn how to build a YouTube channel dedicated to showing off your game and building a massive audience that could generate six figures in income. It's 40% off and lasts for just 14 days. 200 seats left and you're gonna join over 400 students worldwide. The link's below, I'll see you there. For the, the people listening who wanna be solo game developers, can we try and think of maybe like four or five mistakes that you've made as a solo game developer and how you can avoid them? And why? why why their mistakes? Why are they so problematic? Mistake number one, uh, being a solo game developer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> it, it's like, um, I would say the number one mistake in this isn't this just like a solo game dev thing, but this is just like a starting out thing. And this is any anytime anybody asks me for like advice for game devs, it's this one is like, never, ever, 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 ever go into game dev thinking that you're going to make your dream game first. No, you're making Pong first. That's what you do. Like you start small. And that's, it's so important, especially when you get into, so start small turns into like controlling scope. Um, so maybe you can, I don't know which one you want to call it. We'll say controlling scope. Scope, right, and that's it's actually that's actually really uh, really timely because I just today released an update for Cultic that uh, adds ability mode into the game, and abilities uh, like kind of like supernatural Bioshocky abilities were something that were in Cultic way like in the first year of development. Just because I was like this would be a fun thing to make, and then you realize really quickly that a like it didn't fit the game at all, like it was it was a really yeah. bad fit for the pacing. But the bigger thing was like adding that kind of complexity into the game now means that I have to like I have to tutorialize this for the player because the system is deep enough it needs tutorialization i have to justify it which means like trying to it's it's like um like it, it, you, i assume you've played bioshock one right the first one first oh yeah our, i mean twisted tower our it, game right, Twisted tower right. is basically the same thing yeah so like that, that, <laughs> it would be like if if they gave you your first e or your first plasmid without like the cutscene of your guy like injecting it into yeah. himself and go like yeah. you have to kind of explain why you have these powers and that and that's not something i wanted to do in cultic because cultic's kind of got that like dark souls hands-off storytelling a bit to it and so it was just like the more i looked into it it was like, this is going to blow my scope up because now I also have to design combat scenarios around the player having these powers. And it was yep. just like, it took what was a really clean and simple gameplay loop and blew it out of scope. And yep. so that's, I would say, uh, so I almost did that thing where I got off the interstate. Um, so yeah, <laughs> no, the number one big thing, start small and don't, yeah. and don't blow your scope out of proportion. Because so like, I would say the second most common thing I hear besides, oh, my nephew likes video games when I tell somebody I'm a game developer, is somebody who's like, oh man, I've always wanted to make my own Halo or whatever. And it's like- Open world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, no. <laughs> like, but yeah, it's like, start small, it, I guess is a big yeah. one. Oh, for sure. I totally agree. In fact, I, I say, and then we can move on to the second one, but start small, start as a turd. Like, release your first crappy game as fast as you can so that you know what it feels like to release a game. Yeah. And I don't know if you did that, but I, I released like four crappy games before I actually did like a good game that actually made money. Coltic's my first commercial release. So uh, no, I, I, I'd never even finished a game before Coltic. <laughs> so no, I would say I, awesome, I didn't make man. it that far. That's awesome. That's, that's a, that's a anomaly. That's amazing. I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of other other game dev mistakes. And if if you have suggestions that we can talk about, I would I guess um, another one would be like I guess this kind of goes hand in hand with starting small, but um, play like you have to play to your strengths. Um, yeah. Like one, and this uh, uh, this this is really nebulous. It has overlap with point one. I apologize for that. But originally, Coltic had a lot more like story telling and narration and like characters and voice acting, and and I got into it. And I started look and like once I started working on the game and I started like considering how I was gonna develop those things, it was like I don't know how to do any of that. I don't know how to write. I'm not a voice actor. I can't write jokes. Like I don't I don't know how to hire <laughs> voice actors. Like that's gonna be a mess. And so I cut all of yeah. that right away because I was like, yeah. I can't do any of this. So you played to your strengths with with the art the music yeah and the gameplay yeah and i was and you know the, i mean the art style is is you know one of my favorite parts of cultic but it is a crutch you know like like a big part of working 100 big, a big part and, and it's the same reason why like ps1 aesthetic games are are surging is because like you you can get your point across without having to spend hours and hours and hours on on art assets um which is great yep. I, and i and i mean like i i i don't fault it at all because that's basically cultic's just like a more refined ps1 core really you know it, it's using yeah. it's i i'm rendering 
rendering my crappy 3D models down to 180 pixels, so you can't see how bad they are. <laughs> and that's and that and that's and I was able to make a game work around that, which was which was which was great. Uh, but it is a right. crutch. It really is. The hook of your game is the the style and the aesthetic. Do you agree? Uh, yeah. I w- it's definitely part of it. Okay. That, that's definitely the like. That's like the. That's like the thing that gets you to stop and look at it on your timeline. That's right. That's right. And actually, um, Justin at 3D Realms, he was talking to me about that. Is is just how important that stop, that that, I call I call it the stop and stare factor. Mm-hmm. The thing that about your game that makes people stop and actually pay attention. And so that for me is the third mistake. If I can throw in one of my yeah, mistakes, please do. Which is please do. Uh, which is, it's probably a good idea. This sounds really corporate and commercial and monopolistic, but I'm just gonna go for it. I feel like game developers would be so much happier if they would just test their ideas first on social media before going for it and really finishing the game out. Because some ideas are trash and you shouldn't even make the game and sometimes you just need an audience or, or 100 followers to say, hey, you know, this isn't really that interesting. You know, it seems like that's what you did. Like, yeah, you signed with 3D Realms, but until you got the feedback you needed to know that the game actually had sort of viral potential, you weren't fully, you weren't fully two feet, both feet stepping into the project, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, if you're wanting to make a career out of game development, like if you want game development to pay all of your bills, then then yes, like commercial appeal is, is very important. Because like you can go, like you can go, you can pause this video right now and go to Steam and look at the new releases uh, and then see how many games that were released in the last day alone. And it's like, you're competing with all of those. But when it comes to game development as an art form, um, which is more of what I view it as, and that's a little hypocritical because yes, it is my job and I am making money off of it. Yeah. But I am very much a passion first developer which is why like which right. is why I'm working on bone rooms like bone rooms just sounded like a fun game to work on so I'm working on it if you're making a game because it's 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 an idea that seems really cool to you like other people will think it's cool too but yes like if you if you're getting near the release of your game and and you haven't managed to crack a hundred fi- you know like a hundred wish lists it, 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 it might be tough for you to make a commercial su- success out of that and so part of that I guess is determining yeah. what your what your goal is like if your goal is to release your game and make a ton of money and 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 have that pay your bills then yeah you know a, a bit of the corporate like you said like the, yeah. the soulless corporate side of it a bit of that's required because the because the industry yeah. sucks it it, re- <laughs> it really sucks so and any other any other mistakes you can think of as a solo developer that you wish you 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 had known at the time production schedule anything you could think of here yeah i'm sure i'm sure there are um i'm just like I struggle to think of any because Cultic, I got really lucky. I got really, really lucky with Cultic. I, I was making it at a time where boomer shooters were hot. If I had tried to make yep. if I had tried to make Cultic two years from now or like six years ago, it probably would it wouldn't have had a blip on the radar. I got a lot of yep. it was luck, you know, like I got I got a following because some tweets of mine happened to blow up a little bit. 3D Realms picked me up because they happened to see, you know, my tweets. You know, it's just like I, I like I will never deny the fact that a big chunk of Cultic success was luck. And I and I Unfortunately, I think that's a big chunk of of game dev in general. Like, so, you know, sometimes the difference between your game succeeding and not is a, is a YouTuber playing it. You know, it's uh, yep. it, in, and uh, and I mean, like, heck, even like I like think I think Among Us is a great example of that, where it was this really, and, and it might have taken off on its own, but like to my understanding, it was kind of a kind of like a a not very well known at all game until it got you know it got the right people playing it and then it and then it just exploded and there's probably a lot of other examples of that but that's just the one that comes to mind but like i said i mean there's so like you go look at the steam new releases today after you sort through the six or seven uh games that are there um (laughs) look how many games came out today and it's like you're and you're competing for you're competing for people's money with like all of these games and and so i think there is a good chunk of luck with it and had cultic not have had that and I had to earn my following more honestly, we'll say, you know, like through through good old fashioned hard work. I think there would probably be a lot more mistakes to speak of because it would have been a much more painful process. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And just remember, you can join my new course, YouTube Game Dev, starting today. You're gonna learn how to build a YouTube channel dedicated to showing off your game and building a massive audience that can generate six figures in income. And no, it's not a gimmick. It's taught by somebody, me, 
someone who's actually in the trenches doing all of this. Oh, and you're also gonna get my course, Fan Base Framework, which is all about building a massive email list that could generate revenue for you in your game. And also, hey, I'll throw in Stream My Game totally free. This is a course dedicated to teaching you how to reach out to top tier YouTubers and get them to play your games. This course is 40% off, and guys, this is gonna last for just 14 days. The link is below. I'll see you there.